it's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. What I know as a parent is that I'm a better dad when there is margin in my life. And now here's the stars of our show, my mum and dad. It's so ironic that today we're talking about overcoming exhaustion and you're sitting here yawning like you're tired or something. I'm sitting here yawning. Okay, well, maybe we Yours both yawn. Yours beget yawns, and you're yawning too. Uh, you yawn first. Isn't it funny how contagious yawns are? Have you noticed that? Somebody yawns and everyone starts yawning around them. Hey, uh, something really funny uh, popped up in my Facebook feed the other day. I thought I'd share it with you. You ready for this? Okay. So what I love about this, before I play it, is that it's a dad who's giving a report on his day with his kids as if he's a sports player who's just come off the field and is doing a press conference. Because you know how the guys in the press conferences, they always say the same thing, oh, the boys did really well. It's, that, that's, that's the setup. You sum up the day. Yeah, honestly, just felt like we got behind early. After the milk spill and the marker on the wall, we just felt like we were playing catch up the rest of the day. Right before you went to the store, you called a timeout. Was there an attitude change after that? Yeah, it felt like we were losing our heads there for a minute, so we wanted to just calm things down and uh, get back to the basics. Did you ever find your keys? No. No, no idea where they are. You gave them a snack half hour before dinner. Was that planned? No. I uh, lost track of time. W- was Just wasn't thinking. And so... You know, three bites of dinner, that's on me. It didn't look like you had many answers to the double team. Is that a question? I really liked that. I thought it was pretty funny and really consistent with what it feels like to be an exhausted parent, right? (laughs) I just love how we said we we just started off on the wrong foot. As soon as the spilt milk happened, that was it. (laughs) The the, the day was doomed. So today we thought we would uh, share uh, some ideas about what we can do as parents to overcome exhaustion. And, and and I want to use a metaphor for this. What you can hear right now in the background is Kylie playing the piano. Now, Kylie's only just started to learn the piano. In fact, I'm going to play this one instead to start off with. Just started your lessons, getting very excited about it, counting to four, doing a great job, not making any mistakes, sounding good. And then all of a sudden we end up uh, at a new situation where you decide to put two hands together. Well, I didn't decide. My teachers told me I have to. And, and you went from being able to play really well. I, I forgot to count. <laughs> <laughs> to tr- try to do a little bit extra and... I mean, you're definitely getting better, but it's a little bit messy. Is, is it okay if I say that? Of course. Because you're this only... This is week two. Let's, let's be fair. This is week yeah, yeah, yeah. two. I, I, I don't want this to turn into a pick on Kylie thing. I mean, you, you're doing really well, and I'm so excited that you're learning the piano. But it, it, it's a great metaphor for what it's like to be a parent, right? Because you can play one hand just fine. That is, you can look after your own life reasonably well. well. Actually, some people even struggle with that, let's be honest. But most of us can look after our own lives pretty well. That's like playing with one hand. And then you get married or you... you create a partnership with somebody else and you can usually still navigate that pretty well that's like counting while you're playing the notes but as soon as you bring children into the scenario all of a sudden it's like that second hand has to come in so now you're trying to play with one hand count with your mouth and also play with the second hand and my second hand just does not want to stay where it's supposed to stay or find the notes that it's supposed to find (laughs) or do them on the right timing yep (laughs) <laughs> yeah, does that not just sound like... Like parenting a little bit. Yeah, so we thought, uh, let's talk about what it's like to overcome exhaustion as a parent or how we can overcome exhaustion as a parent. What seems to be happening more and more, I mean, I have so many parents who email me and say, uh, we're just so busy all the time. You talk to anybody and they say, oh, flat out, don't have any time, no balance, it's all too much. So it's probably a, a useful conversation to have. I, I think the reality is we're busier than we have ever been. But how, how do we counter that? Because we're more exhausted than we've ever been. <laughs> I kind of feel completely qualified in some ways to answer this because I've done a lot of study and I feel completely unqualified to answer this in other ways because... You're exhausted. I'm exhausted. <laughs> We're exhausted. I'm always trying to do too much. But in the last couple of weeks, I've made a conscious decision to live in this space of time affluence Kylie I've decided to I've decided that time is abundant and I'm going to have all the time that I need how's that working for you (laughs) not very well at all because there's so much stuff that I have to do and what happens is I say I've got all the time in the world and I'm going to be completely focused here and now in the present and everything else just stacks up 
including time with children and a desire to give you a great Mother's Day and all that sort of stuff. Uh, We will talk about Mother's Day tomorrow. I saw your eyes light up when I said that. That's for I'll do better tomorrow. Uh, So I reckon that there's a couple of things that we can do. Uh, What I know as a parent is that I'm a better dad when there is margin in my life. And that's not margin. Uh, Like on on a page, you rule a margin and that creates a line from which you can start, but it also gives you space to make margin notes. It gives you time to pause and reflect if you read over what you've written. The whole purpose of the margin is not only are we starting from a good space, but we're going to be able to reflect and improve as a result. Margin doesn't mean I'm going to just try to do less so that I can stare at my phone and and veg out. That's not the same kind of thing. The word recreation is made of two words, recreation. We're supposed to be recreating ourselves in our in our downtime, in our margin. But but finding space for margin is really tricky. So I think after the break we should discuss how we might help parents navigate this really crazy space of having too much in our lives. In other words, help parents to create some space in this crazy space. Love it. It's the Happy Families Podcast. Imagine a home where discipline got results without anyone having to feel bad or in trouble. The Do's and Don'ts of Discipline is a webinar to help parents set limits with love, compassion and humanity. Find it now at happyfamilies.com.au slash shop. It's the Happy Families Podcast, the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. And today we're going to tell you all how to find more space in your space. Because we're we're so good at ourselves with our six kids and the business. I wish we could tell you. Goodness me. So I reckon there's a handful of things that we need to talk about if we want to create more margin. uh, And the first thing that I'm going to highlight is the importance of sleep. Sleep is not a luxury item. So many people treat sleep as that thing that you get when you've done everything else that you had to get or gotten everything else you had to get. Uh, Sleep is not a luxury item and uh, so many parents are exhausted because they go to bed so late. Well, in in lots of cases, they're doing all of the things that they can't do for themselves during the day because they're being parent and trying to be the perfect parent in that space. And I think the realisation that we can't be good at everything and we can't have it all because in order to try, it's just too big a cost. Yeah, for sure. Second thing that I think is we've got to get really clear on our values and our priorities. And and this is not something that people spend a lot of time on. We're going to do a podcast about this next week uh, because we've had a, a listener send us an email uh, via podcasts at happyfamilies.com.au. They've asked, what is it that you do? They've, they've heard us talk about our quarterly getaways. Um, but getting clear on our priorities. We go away once a quarter for a night or two and we talk about what our priority is going to be and try our hardest to get clear on those priorities. Uh, we, we intentionally decide rather than letting life push us around and force us to have priorities based on other people's agendas. One of the things that I've been really intentional on and I actually have to pull you up on it sometimes as a result is just, you know, our kids go off to school and then having a large family means that there are a lot of different options for extracurricular for each child. I would love it if they would all just play one sport or if they would all just do, you know, X, Y, and Z, but it doesn't happen that way. And in the beginning, before we were experienced parents, we used to just think if everyone just had two sports or two, you know, two extracurricular activities we could manage, we hadn't taken into account that that meant 10 different activities that we were going to have to, and then 12 different activities that we had to try and squeeze into any given week. And so one of the things that I have really, really been conscious of is trying to make our afternoons as calm and peaceful and uncluttered as possible. And that has meant at times when you've come to me and said, this, the kids want to do X, Y, and Z, that I've actually said no. And it's really hard as a parent because you want your children to have every opportunity. You want them to learn the musical instrument and to play this sport, but also to have that opportunity at school to do the drama thing or be in the band or play percussion, whatever it might be. It's really hard to say no, which I guess kind of ties in with this idea of values and priorities. If we're going to reduce exhaustion, we've got to be clear on what we're saying yes to and what we're saying no to. And every time you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. If I say yes to one more lesson that's 20 minutes across town that the kids have got to go to. I'm saying no to family dinner. I'm, exactly, because of the time of day that it is, because it's 20 minutes there, then it's half an hour of the lesson and then 20 minutes back. You've lost well over an hour in, in a really important part of the day for the rest of the family. 
every time you say yes, there's a cost in terms of the things that you're missing out on, as well as the cost of participating in and doing it. And the other thing is, when you say yes to all of these things, they all actually cost financially as well, which means that you've got to work harder, you've got to do more. You you kind of say yes to all that stuff, which means that you might not be able to say yes to a family holiday because you're spending all your money on extracurricular. Very, very hard to balance. I think what it really comes down to is, and this is such an unsatisfactory thing to say on a podcast like this, but you can't have it all. Like you just, you cannot have it all. If you want to not be exhausted, you have to say no to stuff. And, and as you're talking, I think for me, it's just, it's this idea of living a life of intention, you know, being so intentional about the things that you welcome into your space and you welcome into your life and the lives of your children. Something else that's really stood out to me, maybe the last thing to highlight is when, so we made a choice early on, or you made a choice early on in our marriage that you wanted to primarily be at home and raise the kids while I would go out and be the, the primary breadwinner. And while there's been times where you've gone and worked and, and certainly supported the family financially, your central way of supporting our family has been to be at home with the children so that I can go out and do my studies and, and do my work, which has been really, really great for us. But for two people who are running faster than they're able, it's really uh, it's it's absolutely exhausting uh, for two parents to have to go out and work all day, then come home and try to look after the laundry and the cleaning and the cooking and the uniforms and the permission notes for school. And just doing one thing is tiring enough. It, it's got to be so, so hard. So the take-home message from all of this is, number one. Create margin. Create margin, uh, which means. You need to have space to breathe and to be able to reflect and recreate recreation means recreate yourself it doesn't mean stare at netflix or play some stupid game on your telephone which isn't going to have any meaningful impact on your life at all so create some margin somehow second thing get enough sleep like seriously there's so much research that talks about the benefit of sleep nine hours a night if you can eight hours is probably um, sufficient for most i know some people say they can do it on six the research wouldn't support that as being a healthy way to live long term get enough sleep. And the third thing, if you can't have it all, be intentional about your priorities. Well, I'm really looking forward to having a conversation in the next few weeks about those couple getaways because that is where we specifically talk about our priorities. Yeah, so uh, in a couple of Tuesdays, we're going to be having a conversation. We received an email, podcast at happyfamilies.com.au. Somebody asked about uh, what we do in our family meetings. We've got a daily family meeting, a weekly family meeting, and a quarterly couples meeting. So we're going to talk you through that because we think that it's at the absolute forefront of intentional family living. Can't wait to dive in and share all of our secrets and the conversations that we have. We really hope that you've enjoyed the podcast. It's produced by Justin Rulon from Bridge Media and Craig Bruce is our executive producer. Tomorrow, I'll do better tomorrow. Our favourite episode of the week. Tomorrow, though, I'm more nervous than I've ever been for one of these because we're going to be sharing with you some things that we've gotten wrong. Oh, and on Monday, how to have a playful household and create traditions that count can't wait to talk to you about that that's coming up on the happy families podcast if you'd like more info about making your family happier find it all at happyfamilies.com.au